Hey guys, welcome back to The Purpose Driven Dog. Thanks for joining Zach, Riker, and I uh, for our, this week's episode. And today, we're gonna be talking about uh, stay and imprinting the down. Uh, from last week, we had some questions about different types of dogs, so we're gonna use three different types of dogs during, these, during this session. Uh, one is a very low drive, laid back poodle. The other is a very energetic puppy who's brand new to training. And then the last will be a high drive, well-trained Dutch Shepherd named Jenga. So I hope you guys enjoy it and let us know in the comments how things are going. Last week we talked about sit, place, and walking on a loose leash. So just kind of review this a little bit because during the week your, your homework for the progression was each time that you ask for one of those behaviors you're asking the dog to hold that behavior for just a little longer just a little longer and hopefully you're able to get the dog to hold it you know for a minute or so and that's a pretty good success for the first week of training free place so each time we ask her to get up somewhere we're just asking her to hold that behavior until she hears the free free Release command. Hold that behavior. Free. And each time she's gravitating to me to get something good. So we're creating that bubble, that space where all good things happen in here. So if that went well this week, this past week, this week we're going to talk about how the dog holds the behavior as we begin to move away. So what I want you to do is think about the dog as a clock face. The head is 12 o'clock, the tail is 6 o'clock, and then you have the positions of 9, 3, 6, all around the, all around the dog. So what we do first is we're always going to try to work away from the 12 o'clock position. So I'm going to ask Pippi to sit, sit. I'm going to give her a gesture, a physical cue of stay without saying stay. And then I'm going to step right in front of her, one step. I'm going to step back to her side, free. And I'm going to release her. Good girl, Pippi, free, good job. I'm going to swing back around. Okay. Sit. Give her that physical cue. I'm gonna step right in front of her again. This time I took a little half step further. No, no. If they go to lay down, just step in and take their space. You can use some leash pressure if you want, but no reason to correct them because they don't really understand what's going on. Go back to her side again. Good girl. Yes. Free. Come back around. Each time I do this, I'm trying to get a half a step further away from the dog. Sit. With my goal being to work away all the way down the end of the leash. Good girl, Pippi. Free. Now when I can get about halfway down the leash, I'm gonna start varying up my release point as well. Sometimes I'm gonna go back to her side and sometimes I'm gonna release her from distance like you saw me do there. Free. Back around. One more time. Sit. Get a little further away this time. Now I'm almost at least length. Nice. Free. Good girl. Come on, baby. I'm going to do the same thing. Sit. This time I'm going to do all the back to her side before I release it, just to create some variability in training. Free. Good girl. Sit. 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 Good girl. Now, once I can get down the leash, all the way down the leash from the dog, then I want to start working around the dog both clockwise and counterclockwise. But there's a rule of thumb that I generally use when I start this, is I don't try to do it at distance. So anytime I change up the position, if I do a down stay instead of a sit stay, I sit down. Good girl. Good girl. Yes. If I change up position or movement, I always start by close again. So I'm going to be at Pippi's side. I'm going to ask her to sit and stay. 
take that half step in front again. So I just set it up the way we talk, how we move away from 12 o'clock. I'm setting it up to move around the dog well clockwise and counterclockwise. So I take off one side, then the next side. Good girl. Good job. Sit. And each time I do it, I'm gonna to try to move a little deeper in the circle until I can walk a circle around 50 in one way. And then I'm gonna to try to walk our circle around 50 in the other way direction. Good girl, free, place. Now if you're having trouble doing it from a sit stay, if you've got more time on place this past week, you can also start working the clock face on place. So, it be on place, and then I can start moving around here, both clockwise and counterclockwise. This helps them learn to hold behavior a little better before you do it from the sit position. Good job, Dick. Place. Okay, hitting off what Rich just talked about, we're gonna be talking about imprinting the down with this uh, 14 week old puppy that's been here for uh, three days now. Uh, his name is Merlin, he's a golden retriever, and so I have my treats handy, and I'm going to use them as a lure. And so we've already been working with Sit, and so uh, Merlin's trying to be uh, a little teacher's pet and already go into behavior before I ask, but I'll go with it. So, down, good. I'm just luring with the treat. Good boy, good boy. Free. So again, as of now, I'm just luring. Good, and I'm rewarding him when he gives me that behavior. So I'm gonna take my treat down and out, but I don't want to encourage crawling, so I don't wanna put the treat too far forward. And I don't wanna put it too far down, because then Merlin will just put his head down and eat the treat, right? So down, good, there you go, yes. Good, free. Good boy. Sit. Good. Down. Good. Good. Freak. So notice I'm doing it out of the sit. Uh, eventually you want to get it out of the sit and the standing position, but it makes it a little easier working from the sit first, then moving forward. Down. Good. Had to give a little pressure with this hand just a little bit. Free. One more. Down. Yes. Good. 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 Free. So I'm making it fun with treats and also getting the behavior I want. Little dog trainer's secret. Uh, working on getting the dog to hold the down while they are down there and I can stand up. I'm gonna put the treat a little bit in between his paws, that way he can chew on it while I stand up and then I'll release it. So working away from treats, we're gonna work intermittently. Having a down sometimes gets a reward, but real life, it, it can't all be for a treat, right? So, I'm not going to give him a treat this time. And if I need to, I'm gonna use a little leash pressure in the direction that I want him to go. Down. 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 Yes, free. Good. So no treat that time. This time I'll mix in the treat. Good. Down. Yes. Good. Free. I'm going to talk just for a second about our physical cues that we're going to pair with the behaviors we're teaching. Since we're teaching with food, we're naturally creating a physical cue, but over time, I want you to think about how to build these things away so we're not over dramatic with our hand gestures where the dog begins to follow our hands with that anticipation of food. So 
If you use a, a behavior that you take the tree all the way down, the dog follows that position, but then they can lead sometimes to, because of our hands. So what we try to do as we develop these hand signals is we want to keep our behavior short. In other words, our physical cue should either go from chest to waist for the down or from waist to chest for the sit. So think about for sit that you're tossing a softball, right? So the hand comes up, the dog's head goes up, butt will naturally follow. And you're creating that with the treat already by holding the treat up over the dog's head. The head naturally goes up, the butt goes down, and we're shaping that free, shaping that behavior. So sit. And then my hand goes back to the neutral position. So I want to give that gesture, ask for that sit, and then my hand goes back to the neutral position. And our neutral position, just like Zach explained last week, is my leash is on my left hand, holding the loose leash, and my other hand is right down by my side. So the same thing for the down command. I'm gonna give a physical cue, which will go from chest to waist, down. And I'm back to the neutral position. Sit. Toss that softball, down. Bounce that basketball. So hope that helps. And uh, as we move forward through training, you'll see some of these physical cues and we'll go back and explain them if we've missed one or two. So I hope that helps this week and I hope the training is going well. Thanks for joining us on our second episode of uh, Purpose Driven Dog. Uh, make sure that you keep staying with it. Hopefully it is benefiting you guys uh, and we're just going to address some questions. Okay, uh, this week we had some questions, two or three, or actually several, several more questions than two or three, but there was two or three common themes uh, that I think just by addressing the next few things we're gonna talk about is gonna help with all those related problems. Uh, one is when we bring a new dog, whether the dog is a puppy, uh, six months old, 12 months old, 18 months old, doesn't matter. We believe that developing the following things help us get control of living a better life with our dog. One is leadership, and that's what we talked about last week. Uh, all the dogs wearing a drag around leash, it helps us stop unwanted behaviors. We don't have to chase the dog around, we can pick up the leash and stop it. As you'll notice in all the videos that you follow, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram, all the dogs we have in training have these drag around leashes on them already, and that helps us to control behavior. That's the first thing, that helps us teach leadership. Second is we have a schedule. We think a schedule is very important for feeding, for potty breaking, and that helps us get on top of some unwanted behaviors, such as soil in the house, uh, such as grazing throughout the day for food. We can eat at a certain time. And then the last one we talk about normally is control. And how do we control our dog's behavior? Well, we believe in crate use. We like to use a crate to control those behaviors. In other words, if I don't have time uh, to, for my puppy or my dog to be out and he hasn't learned how to live with me yet, then I'm gonna put my puppy away and I'm gonna teach him how to be in his crate and make it a good punishment. I'm gonna teach him how to be in the crate when I'm home, when I leave, or when I just don't have time to supervise him so they don't get in trouble. All these things will help you to lead a less frustrated life with your puppy, it's less aggravation for you, and able to get on top of some unwanted behaviors. Uh, potty training is can be very problematic, but Riker, as we all know, always does things his way and he's gonna demonstrate uh, some some potty training tips and techniques. Thanks. So many yells and search for a being who can explain. How can I become just a man on these land? Yeah.